am Marquita Poinsetta, and I work for eLearning Services. And I am your contact after you've contacted the help desk on Blackboard 9. If you are um, going to be on campus the next couple of weeks and have questions, just look for the lady with the pink hat. So that's what I've been telling everybody. It's like, okay, I'll just kind of walk around and I'll kind of be sitting around in the help desk area. But find the lady with the pink hat and everybody um, knows to point them or whoever has the question to my direction. That's not to say that I'm the only person. There are um, my counterparts within eLearning Services are also available, but I tend to be the one that just kind of, okay, go see her. <laughs> this presentation, or what I'm going to take you through, is an hour and a half. So I need to make sure that you understand up front, this is not an in-depth, put jump both feet into Blackboard 9.1. Um, we're going to cover what is new and some of the differences, and then after these sessions are over with this week, then I'll start um, putting together the presentations to actually get more in detail, like for the Grade Center, um, for safe assignment, for those kinds of things. So this is not the last of it. This is just to get you jump started and into it. How many of you have used Blackboard before? Oh, okay, so you're familiar with the way it looked before we got 9-1. Um, Blackboard 9.1 was turned on August 2nd. Now, if you had summer classes, you were still able to get to Blackboard 8, and they were still available, and will be available for, I think, like six to eight weeks after the course end. So if you need information or need to export your information out of 8, remember that you can get to it by going to bb8.ltu.edu. When you enter uh, my.ltu.edu in your browser, you will be taken to the current course or current Blackboard 9.1. But get excited. It is like going from a Pinto, for those of you who have been around a while and know what a Pinto looked like, to going to um, a Cadillac. Now, understand though, since it is new, there's still little bugs. There's still little things that, you know, don't act the way they're supposed to. But we're going to work through those, and I think overall you're really going to enjoy. No, let me, I won't say enjoy. You're really going to see that it is a little easier to, um, to maneuver through. So all that being said and done, let's take a look at the new Blackboard 9.1. Now, when you go to my.ltu.edu, it's really doesn't look that different, right? We've tried very hard to keep it somewhat consistent. We don't want to shock you guys. You know, we don't want you to go into flux because it's totally different. Some universities, it is totally different. Okay, Blackboard 9.1, this is the login. We've had a lot of changes this summer on campus. First of all, we replenished and replaced all of our uh, laptops for the students. So we are now with the um, few with those right there, and um, also gone from Windows XP to Windows 7 operating system, so that's a change, as well as Blackboard 9.1 is a change. And the last change is that we're trying to get to the final point of single sign-on, which means that usernames are now the same. Now I used to put the initials in the nine-digit number. Well, for your email, for BannerWeb, and for Blackboard, your username is now your initial and your last name, eight, did, eight characters of your last name. Like for mine, it's M. Set. They couldn't squeeze that little A in there, so I have to deal with M. Set. If you have a last name that is probably um, others have on campus, you might be, you know, Johnson 1 or 2 or 3. So to um, verify your username, you can always check in Banner, Banner Web. We'll give you your correct email. But your same username for email will work in Blackboard as well as, as in Banner Web. Banner. One thing that I would like to have all of you to um, be my advocates for, even with the upgrade to 9.1, all, 
all summer we are still finding issues with Internet Explorer. I don't care what it is. It's just some little glitches. So out on the websites and all the documentations, we are strongly suggesting that students use Firefox. For normal things, it's okay. But when students take tests or try to submit assignments, they receive error messages. And because of the way that Microsoft configures their browser, security settings just are all over the place. So to alleviate some of those problems, if you can suggest um, that students use Firefox, especially if they're taking a test or submitting assignments. I have placed a link to Firefox download if they don't have it out on the ltu.edu eHelp website. And all of the student laptops do have uh, the Firefox as part of their image. So I'm on Blackboard 9.1. To access it, get to the portal, my.ltu.edu. I'm going to type in my username, mpointset. Type in my password. And if you haven't gotten into 9.1 over the summer or recently, your default password for 9.1 is your month, month, day, day, last two digits of the year of your birthday. Okay. So that being said, I'm right here at Blackboard 9.1 and I'm going to get ready to log in. So M-P-O-I-N-S-E-T-T, -T, my u new username, click login. Again, we tried to keep the, the way it looks very similar. You have all of the Blackboard tools and links on the left-hand side. Um, organizations, when you first log in, you'll, or announcements, you'll see in the middle pane, and then all of the courses are on the right-hand side. And one other important thing, please, when you log in, look up right underneath the individual tabs, because these are where important announcements are placed. The tabs to the very top navigate you to different areas, like my LTU is your main portal page. My courses just shows you a list of those courses that you are either teaching or um, are a TA in, or even enrolled in. So that will bring that. My orgs, a listing of those organizations to which you are either a leader or a participant in. And Content, I'm not going to talk about too much. It's there. But eHelp is the one that I really want you to remember that that is available. eHelp is the collaboration website between the help desk and lead learning. eHelp is your second stop, if you can't, uh, or your first stop, I should say, if you need some help or you're trying to get something done in Blackboard and you're not sure. Within the next two weeks, it will be totally populated with information on Blackboard 9.1. And I've split it up so that if you're faculty, it will, you can click on faculty and it'll take you to that information that is specifically for how you do things as a faculty member. If you are a student, it takes you to that information that's specifically set up for students. And this might not be a bad thing to have your students go to eHelp because it does go through um, how do they post to the discussion board, how do they use assignments. And believe me, that's sometimes you sit in there, it's like, how do I do that? How do I use the discussion board? Um, so this is a good place for you to send them to do that or find that information out. And again, within the next two weeks, I'll have some nice videos that I'll post there. Very short, two, two and a half minutes, how to do some things, as well as for faculty. Yes? Um, I'm teaching a master's course this coming semester, and I'm wondering if the students, obviously this is going to be brand new to them, when they're enrolling, are there, are there like any kind of orientation, or is there anything that, that is suggested to them to get familiar with the night? Will they be on campus or off campus? Okay. Online, if it's completely an online session, there is what um, the LTU Online has. We have Module Zero. Yeah. 
And module zero has that information for students, um, you know, how to get through an online course, the links to the e-help area. Right. So yes, that is available. 49.1. 49.1, yep. Okay. We, in fact, e-learning, LTU Online and e-learning support, we're all one like office. So I work with all those guys. So we work back and forth. So yes, they'll, it'll point them to the e-help page. Okay, going back to my courses. I am going to go now into a course that I am teaching. So I'm gonna click on my course. The first thing that I want you to notice is over here at the top right-hand corner, there's a little button called edit mode on oh. edit. Default, I am positive, that should be on. Edit mode on is the instructor view. So just so you know that if it doesn't look right or if you can't do something, go up to the top and make sure that edit mode is on. This is where it starts to look a little different. If you've used 8 before, you're still seeing your little menu tabs over here and you're seeing the area over here. But remember how in 8 you had to say you wanted to create an announcement? You would have to click control panel and then control panel would open up. Then you had to find out where it was there. Then you had to do it from there. <coughs> we made it so much easier for you guys. It's going to be so, you're going to so love this. It's going to so love this. Okay, announcements. I'm at the announcements area right now. I don't have to go anywhere but to create an announcement. As soon as I click on create an announcement from the tab over here, I can type in the subject. Whoops, if I could type and not move. And it's almost very similar to what you, you did before, okay? You have your options if you want to make it um, permanent or date restricted from until. Now, this one is new. This option right here is new and it's override user notification settings. That is a new feature in Blackboard 9.1, and I'm telling you this because I'm also going to tell you that right now it's not working. <laughs> but what it does is the notification is a known bug within 9.1 that they are working on, so it probably will become available and fixed within 90 days. But with 9.1, as a student, I can go into my settings and I can say, don't, don't, I don't want to receive emails from my instructor. I just, uh, I just did too many emails. I can turn my, sent my email off. But you, as the instructor, have the option to override <laughs> and send them an email. And it don't care what they said. Okay. But like I said, right now it's not working. The downside to this is, as well as notification is not working, this option is not working either to send the email. So if you put a check mark there, like some instructors email their students with the announcement, that option, you can put a check mark there from now until the cows come home and the students won't get an email. So as a workaround, I'm suggesting that if you have that and you want to send the email to the students, do a copy of the announcement text itself and then just, um, I'll show you how to go send email the regular way to the email to your students or all users in the course. That will work. Okay, so I put in my announcement. I guess I should put in a message. Welcome back. Um, my options, and I just click Submit. Now, that's the other beautiful thing that I love. I used to hate doing this, especially when I'm trying to put documentation, because you click Submit, then you click OK, and then you click OK again. Less clicks in 9-1. I click Submit, my announcement's there. 